thank you, everybody. Uh, give uh, Paul Borman, a great doctor, a round of applause for that introduction. I have him on retainer, and uh, <laughs> so you can see that he's doing quite a good job. He only made one mistake, and that there are some that say that I go back to the Hayes Tilden era, but of course you don't know what that means. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, Margaret Flowers, a great doctor who sacrificed her own career to lead this movement, uh, has to be acknowledged. But I also wanted you to know that Claire McGee and I just called Dennis Kucinich to let him know that he had a lot of friends here in Portland. We tried to call Michael Moore, too, but uh, <laughs> my dear Joel Siegel couldn't get the number. We had the, the numbers we had are, are wrong. And, you know, I knew Michael Moore. Well, he came into my office in Washington one day. He's from Flint, a worker, union man, activist. And he said, John, uh, I want to tell you something. I uh, just sold my house and car, borrowed all the money that I can, and I'm going to Hollywood to make a movie. And I said, oh, <laughs> I, I won't, I'm in church. So I, I said, this guy is going to hit me up for some money. I know what this is about. He didn't. But I had never seen Michael Moore with a camera in his hand all the years that I had known him. And I figured that he'd end up, uh, and I told him so, uh, in, in those Hollywood restaurants where the waiter's got some great idea that's going to, when he gets a break, he's going to really hit it rich. And I said, Michael, they'll be waiting for you when you get off the bus, man. There, don't. And this, the first thing he did was a hit. The second won an Oscar. Now that poor guy that I felt so sorry for is a multimillionaire. <laughs> Michael, please answer my calls. <laughs> So, you never know in this semi-capitalist system who's going to strike it rich, but we do know a lot of people are going to suffer in it. The inequality has been commented. And hasn't this been a marvelous turnout here in Portland, Oregon, with all... The people, this is incredible. So I'll make my, uh, the, the idea I was saving for the conclusion I'm going to tell you now. Uh, over uh, one or more glasses of wine, I forgot what happened at Gorman's place last night. Uh, we determined that the one thing that is missing is that all of us across the states need to get together if only for one day, all of us. We will need a much, look, this is, or, this is Portland alone. We need to get together one day. Everybody that understands what's going on and uh, everyone agreed with me, and the place that it ought to be is Portland, Oregon. Okay? Portland, Oregon. And it ought to be soon. Now, you know, uh, I mean, in the next couple months, uh, spring or something like that, uh, and it'll be a one-day conference. 
Everybody come to Portland. Now, of course, there'll be the day before the conference. That's two days. Then there'll be the day after the conference. That's three days. So it's, but it's a one-day conference. You can only, you don't have to stay, you don't have to come early or stay late. But we all ought to put our bodies and hearts and mind and commitment on coming together and getting to know these 20-something states that Dr. Flowers has already identified because there are people like us all over the country waiting for the clarion call, and I say they ought to come here to this city that's been so good and loyal and committed and with the daring ideas that have been exchanged here today. So as we do when I used to be chairman of the Judiciary Committee, all in favor say aye. Aye. And all the no's leave the room and we won't even count you. (laughs) Congressional democracy at work. Now, the one thing I wanted to do is try to relate this to everything that, would, that is going on. You know, it would be nice if this was all we had to do. Uh, and it isn't. And uh, the person that inspired me to this wider view, the greatest person that's influenced my political belief system is Martin Luther King, Jr. And when you boil it down, when you try to synthesize this incredible life, uh, it's jobs, justice, and peace. And the part that uh, is very interesting is justice. That means economic and political justice. Now, I've been to a number of events where justice and peace uh, are the one, the things that are lifted up. But, guess what? If you haven't got a job, uh, justice and peace don't, aren't as nearly relevant. Uh, and I'm uh, uh, reluctant to say this in this audience, uh, health care is, there are people that would rather be sick or stay sick and have a job than uh, have health care and no job. And so it, it's, it's not accidental that jobs comes first. And the thing that uh, we work on here in, big time in our office is health care, S- universal health care, single-payer health care, Medicare for all. We're working on the messaging. But the, the point is, though, that until we deal with the fact that in my city, 38% of the people in Detroit are unemployed. That's a depression. That's, that's not a recession. That is a depression. And finally, we, we're, we're just digging up uh, some of the, the conversations with Bernanke in which he admitted that, that this economic downturn is in many ways worse than the depression of the 30s. And I can believe that because those uh, subprime mortgages that were chopped up and rebundled and sent into the markets, economic markets around the world affected every international, every economy in the world. Everybody was affected. And it started by ripping off the poor and minorities uh, who 
were, were worked into the, the, that situation. And then on top of it, the hedge fund operators bet against the, the own uh, sis, the stocks that they were selling. They, they played the market both ways, the most ruthless thing, and I am ashamed to tell you not one of them have gone to prison yet. And they ought to. And they will. If I am the ranking member of the Judiciary Committee and have something to say about it, and I think that I do. And so uh, these things all interact. Uh, the the uh, climate, global warming, uh, the debt ceiling, uh, the creation of jobs. And by the way, I've got a jobs bill in that a revision. How many people uh, around the Hayes Tilden era remember? Uh, Remember the Humphrey Hawkins Full Employment and, and, and Balanced Growth Act. Give, your, give them a round of applause. Because we, we revised it. I was there for that, of course, and, uh, and worked with uh, uh, Gus Hawkins, who was then the dean of the Congressional Black Caucus from Los Angeles, and, of course, Senator Hubert Humphrey. Uh, and we got that bill through. And what's at the heart of, of the whole question of creating jobs is the question that we resolved then, is that the federal government has a legitimate and constitutional duty to create work directly when unemployment rises over 10%. That, that's what's being debated, and that's what's creating so much vague rhetoric about uh, jobs. Everybody's talking about jobs. Very little is being done about it. And, and I am respectfully uh, asking you to join with those organizations uh, here in and around this great city uh, to help us move to that uh, uh, aspect. Now, I wanted to just uh, say, uh, uh, there's another fellow not here that's very important to me, and his name is Ed Schultz on MSNBC. He, he chairs our Congressional Black Caucus events every September, and the panel that he comes on is universal health care. This is the second year in a row that he's, uh, he's done that, and uh, we're just so proud of him. But what about, what about, there's so many, well, let's do it this way. Everybody that's in the healthcare field, profession, the doctors, the nurses, the scholars, please stand up and get your round of applause. Everybody that's in it. Look at that. Up, look at the balconies. Look around you. Look at a Thank you. PNHP is correct. Most doctors want universal health care. And I'm so proud of that because the AMA has done everything they can to uh, befuddle the issues and confuse. And if it's not too inappropriate, I'd like to get a word in on behalf of the uh, Tea Party activists. Well, what would you want to do that for, Chairman Conyers? Because most of them are people that have a right to be angry, 
but they've got their facts mixed up. 91% of all of the radio talk is conservative talk shows. Limbo is, is just the number one, and Beck and Coulter, it goes on and on and on. 91%, that's Bill Press in his latest book on the subject. And so we can understand the confusion uh, in their hearts and minds. And so uh, I, I just wanted to thank particularly, in addition to Dr. Flowers, is Paul Hotchfield and Mike Huntington. Aren't those guys good? Boy. So uh, here's, here's the, the thing, that the, the few thoughts that I wanted to just close with. Look, you can never win a fight unless you're ready to get into a fight. And that's what we're in. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to be nasty or vindictive or attack one's personalities that don't agree with you or character, of which there's way too much going on now. But there's also something I want to distinguish between facts and what people believe, even if they believe it wrongly, because facts alone will not win this debate. But I'll tell you what... But being accurate will go a long way to set the record straight. But I'll tell you what really does it is the experiences that all of us know and all of those that do not agree with us know is correct. That is, that this system is broken or doesn't even exist. Uh, it makes no sense. And even the people that are reaping the benefits, and, and, and there are, there's that group of people that will never agree with us, uh, they know that we are right. And we know that we are right. And they're beginning to see that we are unrelenting in our determination to change the health system in the United States of America. And we can do it. And we will do it. Now, this started, and, and I was so surprised to find out that Harry Truman had the audacity in the first year of his presidency to talk about, in effect, a universal single-payer health care bill. Then uh, there was a line of, of leaders in the Congress. Uh, how many remember Ron Dellums, and, who wrote the health care bill? How many remember Marty Russo of Chicago, Illinois, that led the struggle? How many remember in the Congress now Dr. Jim McDermott of Washington, who is leading it? And he's working with me uh, even to this day. And so there's a strong history being written and we're learning how to message the story, to tell the daily struggles. Just suppose we organize all the people uh, and their families who've been hurt or crushed by this rotten health care system. We would have an army of millions, and that's what we're about doing. So... I don't have to ask you to join me in Portland because you, you, you'll be here waiting for all of us from around America to get back in just a few months. Thank you very much. 
You've been listening to Congressman John Conyers of Michigan's 14th District speaking at the Oregon Single Payer Conference on January 29, 2011, in Portland, Oregon. In a moment, we'll return to the question and answer session from the presentation. To find out more about the campaign for single payer health care, please visit the Physicians for a National Health Plan website at pnhp.org. You can find out more about the campaign by visiting the Healthcare Now website at healthcare-now.org. The Mad as Hell Doctors website at madashelldoctors.com and the Oregon Single Payer Campaign at facebook.com slash singlepayeroregon. To find out more about Congressman John Conyers and his work, please visit his website at conyers.house.gov. And now we return to the question and answer session from the presentation. Congressman John Conyers spoke at the Oregon Single Payer Conference in Portland, Oregon, on January 29, 2011. Thank you. Good afternoon, Hi. Congressman. Good to see you. Um, I've been checking the Library of Congress website every day, looking for HR 676, and wondering if you can tell us the status. Well, yeah, uh, it's been reintroduced, and uh, we have 22 co-sponsors. Uh, in the 111th, we had 85. And uh, here's a, a sub-question for Joel Siegel, on my staff from Washington. Were there any new members co-sponsoring this year, Joel, that weren't on last year not yet not yet they're all the same ones but the bill will be introduced we've reserved hr six. oh we haven't introduced it yet well it's we're waiting for the bill clerk to call because mr connors make sure we reserve, we reserve the oh okay uh, you all right we we have the co-sponsors but we have not dropped the bill yet great i'll be able to start sleeping again at night <laughs> thank you thank you Blumenauer, is he on it yet? No. Was he on it before? No, none of the Oregon delegation. Well, wait a minute. No, uh, no, what? Uh, no, uh, there was one member that was on it last time. DeFazio. DeFazio was on it last time, yeah. But he's, he's not on it yet. But this, look, we're only in the second the first month. You know. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, they uh, listed about 21 states. I counted 21 states that were considering or had passed a single payer um, bill of some kind. Um, I'd like to hear your perspective on what the process is to get the waivers through at the federal level to let that happen. Can it be a simple majority vote in the Senate, or can the Republicans filibuster it, or what's the deal? And how does it does it have to go through the House or just the Senate, or what? Both. It has to go through Siegel both says for both. every state. Uh, no, it, it, it'd be a waiver for everybody, wouldn't it? Yes. You don't have to do it state by state. Yeah, Senator Bernie Sanders is introducing the bill. Sanders, Bernie Sanders, as you know it, doing it. Yay, Bernie! And. By the way, when he was a congressman, he was on 676 all the time. So we're proud of Bernie Sanders. And um, dovetailing on that question, um, I'm just wondering in regards to the bill that um, Senators Wyden and Brown have put together for state waivers, um, how is is that some a route that could possibly get us there too? Um, and if so, you know, strategically, do you see the state by state um, process as being a means by which we can well, get there? Me, and, and ERISA, tell me about ERISA. Let, what do let, we do with ERISA? Let me explain this to you. Most members of the federal legislature regard themselves as geniuses. <laughs> You have to understand that. So no matter who introduces what, 
There's always somebody with a little better wrinkle on it and they can do it a little better. So we, we let them get all that out of their system and then, then we come back home and, and we, we, we get down to business. Uh, one of the reasons we want to start off here is because the next place, uh, and uh, where did you suggest that we start off instead of Portland? What? Yes, you. No, I didn't. Where, where? I just mentioned Multnomah Falls because I have visitors come there from all over. Oh, well. And when you hear what they say about Portland, they say it rains there all the time, and I say at least you don't have to show. Well, thank you. Yes, that's, that's very persuasive and compelling. You got visitors, so we should all come from all over the USA to... No, I, I think we better stay in Portland. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. But from there, folks, we are going, uh, unless, if it's a majority sentiment, I'm, uh, we're going to the Bay Area of California, home of Nancy Pelosi. And from there, we're going to Baltimore, Maryland, the home of Steny Hoyer. In other words, we're getting down to business. Uh, no, no more soft gloves, Conyers. Uh, we're going to have to face up to this. Now, uh, Mr. Siegel, what about the ERISA uh, aspect of this? Take the mic. Oh, the mic? Okay. Yeah, the mic. Thank you, Chairman Conyers. I still call him chairman because he's the chairman, right? Uh, The ERISA waiver will be, according to Dennis Kucinich uh, and his staffer, the battle in Congress over the next two years will be about ERISA waiver. Well, describe it. ERISA waiver just means the federal government, uh, usually through HHS, gives permission to the states to get federal dollars. So if a state wants to go single-payer, like which Oregon will or Vermont, if they want to use Medicaid dollars to go to a single-payer trust fund, they get the waiver. Um, But the uh, lobbyists and the Republicans are going to do everything they can to not grant that waiver. So that will be the battle next two years. Boy, uh, now I'll get another staffer to explain what this staffer just said. (laughs) Now, we have uh, four people... It was clear. It was pretty clear. <laughs> now, we, I, I was just told we have two minutes and four people, so conduct yourselves accordingly. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I think you're familiar with the names of these two companies named Palmetto and NHIC. Wait, repeat that, please. Uh, two companies named Palmetto and NHIC, they administer Medicare for the federal government. And recently, uh, hundreds of doctors nationwide were in danger of going out of business because Palmetto refused to pay any of their claims until they threatened lawsuits, went to their congressman, whatever. So I'm wondering, what entity oversees those companies that you can complain to when they're not going by the federal law to administer Medicare? Okay, that's question one. Question two, extra charter. Yeah. Uh, My question is about health insurance exchanges. It's the issue brought up with the federal government, and we're hearing about it in Oregon and energy maybe being put towards it in the state of Oregon, about whether any energy at all in this state should be put towards this health insurance exchange thing. All right. Thank you. Question number three. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I I, uh, understand there's been a constitutional amendment introduced in the uh, House by, I believe it was Donna Edwards, to abolish corporate personhood. And if I'm not mistaken, you're a co-signer? I, I don't know if I am, but I will be. <laughs> but it will be coming to my committee. Well, will you do me a favor and ask Congressman DeFazio to sign on to that? Because we had a hell of a time getting him to sign on at 676. Yeah. Well, some people, you know, uh, they, they like to be asked... Uh, <laughs> 
before they come on. So, yes, I will ask him. All right. We'll keep this at question three. The question four. Thank you. You must have a great memory. Uh, <laughs> uh, on a winning issue, I've, I've been in the uh, private, uh, private insurance industry for about 30 years as an independent agent, and I've come to the point where I, I see that single-payer Medicare for all is the way to go. Thank you. And <clears throat> my, my question, yes, yes, because uh, I just can't serve all of my, I can't serve my clients. I have to turn them down most of the time. Yeah. It really breaks my heart. Uh, anyway, my, but uh, Medicare clients, I can. So my, I, I'm concerned about the piratization I guess some people call it privatization, of, of good government programs like Social Security and Medicare. And that's my question is how can we use that, turn it around, and become our issue where, where we find out what, what the, what the uh, government, government's role is and how to stop the piratization, which, by the way, is something like, may I say, Medicare Advantage is just one step toward privatizing Medicare. Do we really want to do that? Well, thank you. Thank you for... Thank you for complimenting me on my ability to remember all those. Joel Siegel, answer all of these questions in 30 seconds. We know you can do it. <laughs> all right. No, you, you, you could do it better than me, but I'll give it a stab. Um, the, I think the question about the exchanges. Uh, so I'm going to say something that I think is the truth. Um, why not have states opt for a single-payer exchange? Mm. Um, in my opinion, as someone who studied health care for 20 years, I don't see any evidence that private insurance will ever work, regardless of any comp. There's 1,300 private insurance plans since 48, so why would they work now? Yeah. And the theory of competition is the exchanges would create competition. Hey, I'm sorry, I just don't buy it. Um, it has not worked in Massachusetts. They have cost overruns. They're cutting care. And I don't think it should be the basis of a national model. I think single-payer will work as it already works everywhere else. Thank you. Uh, uh, what else? Okay. What would you call it? Piratization? <laughs> Medi <laughs> Medicare piratization? Um, thus far, all attempts to piratize uh, Medicare has failed. But um, unless we are able to do what the Mad as Hell doctors have done... Uh, to educate that the problem is not Medicare, it's that Medicare feeds the corporate monster. It's called for-profit corporate hospitals. And drugs that cost a thousand percent markup and medical technology, which is a hundred billion dollar a year business, we got to educate that Medicare is the best program, it's the most efficient, but it's not sustainable if it feeds corporate medicine. So instead of privatizing Medicare, let's get rid of corporate medicine. Let's privatize them. <laughs> I'm sorry, let's, let's public, publicize them. Um, so then what was, there was, what, five other questions? <laughs> what was the other one? So, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't know the answer to that question. Is there anyone else here that can answer it? Mr. <laughs> Anybody else? Wait, you work for me, buddy. <laughs> That's true. I, I don't work for you. And by the way, all those great lines, you didn't put in any of my remarks. I noticed you're using them all. I do the best I can. I don't know the answer about the corporate. Okay, we'll call back to Washington and get the answer for the other three. Give Joe Siegel a round of applause. He's a good man. Good man. You've been listening to Congressman John Conyers of Michigan's 14th District speaking at the Oregon Single Payer Conference in Portland, Oregon on January 29, 2011. To find out more about the campaign for single payer health care, please visit the Physicians for a National Health Plan website at pnhp.org. You can find out more about the campaign by visiting the Healthcare Now website at healthcare-now.org, the Mad as Hell Doctors website at madashelldoctors.com, and the Oregon Single Payer Campaign at facebook.com slash singlepayeroregon.
To find out more about Congressman John Conyers and his work, please visit his website at conyers.house.gov. This program was produced by PDX Justice Media Productions of Portland, Oregon. To find out more about our work and to access our growing library of free on-demand streaming video and audio programs, please visit our website at pdxjustice.org. You can also watch our programs on YouTube and on the Vimeo Home for Videos at vimeo.com. Vimeo is also available as a channel streaming in high definition direct to your television via the Netflix on-demand video service. And you can write to us with your comments and questions at pdxjustice at riseup.net. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks for supporting listener-sponsored radio, public access cable television, net neutrality, independent bookstores, and all forms of grassroots, democratic, community media.